jambo mtazamaji wa runinga ya ETV na karibu katika habari zetu za leo. Hii leo tunaangazia jamaa moja kwa jina Patrick Osoi. Patrick Osoi mzaliwa wa magharibi mwa Kenya amejitoza katika ulingo wa siasa akiahidi kuleta mabadiliko makubwa katika uongozi wa taifa hili la Kenya hii ni kufuatia malalamiko ya wananchi wa Kenya hasa kizazi cha Gen Z cha kwamba uongozi katika taifa letu la Kenya umekuwa duni umekuwa na ukora mingi huku uwizi wa mali ya umma ukionekana kutamba kila mahali kulingana na Patrick Osoi anaahidi ya kwamba ataleta uongozi ambao hauna uongo ataleta uongozi ambao utaendeshwa na wananchi wenyewe na yeye akiwa kisazi cha Mirinia atahakikisha ya kwamba uongozi wake utazingatia kila lika kila mwananchi wa Kenya akishughulikiwa pia anaahidi ya kwamba hatafumilia mambo ya wizi wa mali ya umma huku akisema ya kwamba ukifikisha umri wa miaka sitini, wewe huduma zako kwa taifa zinafaa kusitizwa na kwamba wewe hauwezi kuleta mabadiliko yeyote iwapo umeshatumika kwa miaka sitini. Tusikize zaidi kutoka kwake. So my name is Patrick Osoi, uh, born in Western Kenya, raised in and also part, uh, partly in Nigeria. I want to say that I looked like I was someone who was isolated because when I started this aspiration, uh, when I became actually loud, that is around May, uh, when I came into the country and I went around to several counties, was in Kisumu County, I was in Uganda County, and also was in Nairobi County. I also met a few of politicians uh, uh, told them about my aspiration that I had. So the challenging thing is that uh, my aspiration to become the Kenyan president actually started way back when I was working with the government. So I noticed we were under a lot of problems, especially the policies. And again, we had problems to do with corruption. So one, uh, I am very skeptical, especially on the promises, because one, I don't want to come up and lie to Kenyans that because I'm aspiring to be a Kenyan president, I am promising this and this and that. But what I want to assure you that the leadership that I want or I, we, we want to bring in Kenya today is a leadership that is inclusive, a leadership that is collective. The office of the president uh, in 2027 and beyond it will be about the people. What do you want it done? It's not about me because the, reason, the issues we have in the country today is because somebody promised. And he promised not with his money, but the money that belongs to the people. So we, we, Kenyans need also come to a sanity level whereby they need to understand that we are employing these people. It is not about them promising us, but us telling them what they need to do. So I'll be a president of the people, by the people, for the people. People will give me the blueprint of what they want in this country. I was saying yesterday in Jakaranda that if people decide today how we are going to deal with the corruption is to hang those people. That is exactly what we are going to do. If people decide that these people who have, we need to do audit from 1963 to date, that is what we are going to do. So, but what I can assure Kenyans, I am a millennial at this given time, but I can say, tell, tell you this, I am one of the leaders in this country who cannot be corrupt corruptible, to be incorruptible. What I mean is, there are no money that will buy Patrick Soy to change the mind of making this country to be different, because that is the biggest achievement that we can have as a country. I want to see equity. I want to see where instances whereby there are no corruption, instances where there is no impunity, instances where there is no nepotism. We have today people who are so educated today. 
they cannot get jobs anywhere because they do not know anybody. And that is how the way I've, I've explained how we're going to deal with it. I've been a committed uh, uh, officer in the National Intelligence Service. I have been a committed person in my entire life in matters integrity. So I want to see a Kenya that is zero tolerance to corruption. I want to see a country whereby a Kenyan, we will seal all the loopholes of corruption in this country. Because I'm telling you, what we have today is like a sack that you're trying to put water on it. And that water, even if it doesn't matter the amount of gallons you can put on that uh, sack, it will never get full. So what we need to do as Kenyans, we need to scrap off any person who has a virus, any person who has been in the politics um, uh, realm, because they had an opportunity to defend the Kenyans not to go the way of corruption. So anybody who comes to you who has been in the politics before, telling you that he's going to bring change in this country, I can tell you for free, there's no change they are going to bring. The people who are going to bring change in this country are new faces, young people, energetic people in this country. And again, as I answer to you to that, that I want to see a, a Kenya whereby people are considerate. We do not expect somebody to work more than 60 years. We do not expect you to work more than 30 years or 40 years in the government. We are going to make sure that if you get employed at 25 years when you finish your campus, you either work for 25, 30 years, that is 55 years, or 60 years, whichever comes first. And you go home and you usher in a, a new people who have already graduated after 25 years. So those are kind of things I have felt it is important for us to do. And our senior people in the politics today, I want to say that there is no truth in this politics. We have a lot of selfishness in our country today in matters of leadership. Today you are seeing people who are past 60 years trying to come to tell us as young people they are going to bring change to this country. I can assure you for free, there is no change a person the old 60 years that can bring a revolution or can, 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 can bring any kind of revolution, whether, 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 um, whether economic revolution, leadership revolution, party revolution in this country. It is we, the young people, who are going to revolutionize this country and make it better for us because we have a future to live. Somebody up past 60 years, he has only 10 years, according to the biblical, to just live on this earth. We have nothing to fight for. There's nothing to live for. So we, the young people, we need to stand firm and we need to stand with no fear to make sure the change we want is the change that we are going to embrace. I can assure you, Kenyans are very considerate people. Kenyans, they cannot demand what they know it is not possible. They will demand and they will give me a job knowing that it is possible. We can bring this country to a first world country, I'm telling you. I want to see a, 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 rotational, a rotational aspect adopted in our government system, whereby, as I said earlier, that if you work for 30 years or you eat 60 years, you go home and no appointment, no any other job other than agricultural services. In the agriculture sector, I want to say this, something that uh, I talked to a meeting of Mount Kenya, and I say it that the agenda that we have today, there's something called global, uh, globalist. Or there are people trying to hijack their, their agriculture, their agriculture uh, our, our agriculture in this country. So I want to say that if we are keen enough to moderate and to be able to do market linkages, we are able to consider that how our farmers are our farmers doing the farming in a professional way. Are they having market linkages today? What we are seeing, we are seeing the market is being Why? Because the president of the government of today has already been who are trying to control this country. And I want to talk very clearly because I'm in Mount Kenya East today. The Mirath sector, you've seen it. The politics getting into such kind of aspect. Because one, the government wants to kill the economic power of every community in this country so that they are able to control the citizens of this country. I am saying this from the uh, from, an, from a perspective of what I've seen in the U.S. The U.S. citizens have uh, they live on their knees. Why the government already captured th th their citizen in such that they live on their knees? We need to resist this kind of economic um, uh, I would call terrorism and economic damage of this country. So I will see a country that is focused on agricultural produce and market linkages whereby we, that is the most important thing for a farmer. 
nothing else that a farmer wants. Market linkages, cheap, uh, cheap fertilizers, and a good conducive environment for them, a conducive environment for them to do their farm. Uh, one thing I want to say that um, the counties and the devolution that we brought and the devolution that is being killed by the same giant corruption. I want to say that you, you not, we have Texas as a state in the United States, which is bigger than this country, almost twice, which is managed by a governor. So, and that is why you have heard us saying that we want also the number of seats of governors to be reduced, the number of senators to be reduced, to scrap off some seats that not, they are not necessary to run our government today. So what I'm seeing here is that once we generate, or once we come up with um, a software system to run our, 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 our administration, we are going to come and be able to be, you know, uh, able to curb every issue in every county. Again, as I said, it is easier to make our education free. One, because I told you, every constituency received more than 130 million. If you multiply that by the number of constituencies, you're seeing billions of monies flowing there. And I can tell you the billions of money that are there, when you multiply that, is enough to give our kids education free from primary to high school. Check the track records of every person, every leader in this country. And that's why I put a disclaimer to Gen Z's and millennials. They need to check the record. They need to check even for myself. Because we do not want any leader, any person taking advantage of, uh, of whatever is happening in this country. But we want one Kenya that is geared to change. On the matters Eric Omondi, for example, I wouldn't want to capitalize much on that. But I would say that we need to be very cautious to see and look where is Patrick Osoy coming to take advantage of this movement. What was Patrick Osoy doing before or prior to this movement? We need to check very closely, and that's why I put in disclaimer. I want Gen Z's and Millennium to go to my page, see what I did on May, and what came to be about our bill and what is happening in this country. We were the first people. I've also had Eric Command also advocating for good things in this country before this demonstration. Therefore, I say, even if whatever way he is putting it, he is putting it for the goodwill, or it has a good will, whether he is being engineered to do that, but whatever he is advocating for is for the goodwill of this country. Good governance, good leadership, no corruption, no impunity, no nobility. Zidi kupata haya na mengine zaidi kwa YouTube Embu Bold TV Facebook utatupata kwa Embu Bold TV TikTok pia Utatupata kwa Embu Bold TV. Mimi wako Ireri Kadio. Kwa heri.